Welcome to the latest edition of Circling the Bases. I'm DJ Short, and with me here once again is Scott Pianowski from Yahoo. We are live on Twitch this afternoon, so thanks for hanging out with us there. And if you're listening in podcast form or watching later on YouTube, we're recording Wednesday afternoon, just about 24 hours away from the start of the 2023 MLB season. How's it going, Scott? Yeah, I'm in a great mood, man. As you said, we're getting really close. And the opening day is the way it should be. There's been years where there's been like the standalone opener or just like a handful of teams open. No, 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 no. None of that. 15 games, 30 teams. It's wall-to-wall baseball from the moment the day starts till the end of the night. So that's what it should be, man. Everybody should play an opening day. No more of this like, oh, half the teams play or one stand. No, no. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants to see. We're drafting all these guys, right? We want to go see them play tomorrow. And we're going to see them play tomorrow. And and, you know, if you don't have time to watch the season, if you're busy for the next six months, no worries, because we're going to give you all the headlines, you know, all the seasonal winners and awards and all that. It's all going to be revealed today. Yes. I mean, everyone wants to see Patrick Corbin pitch tomorrow. Everyone wants to see Corey the Kluber do. pitch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the hitters definitely do. But you're right. I mean, Friday's going to be a bit of a bummer. It's a little bit of a light schedule. It's like a big tease. You get all the games on uh, an opening day, and then a bunch of teams are off on, on Friday. But Soon we'll get into that that daily routine where pretty much every team's playing every day. It's uh it's a nice routine to settle into. It's also a very long season. So I, I feel like the first day, maybe yeah, I'm gonna be all into it and stuff like that. But I feel like you gotta pace yourself a little bit. Sure. You're gonna be overloaded. So and you said the word routine, which is a big part of fantasy, right? No, and this is something I get wrong in one of my leagues every year. No when that first free agent window is open like, like yeah. one of my leagues is generally a sunday bidding league but we're bidding tonight i think tout wars as as bidding tonight yep. put the stuff in your calendar oh, you, you're, you're busy right and maybe you're in college maybe you have a family maybe, maybe you have kids you get soccer practice you know you get in the car fix you need to have this stuff in your calendar and you need to get mm-hmm. into a routine because so much of being a successful fantasy manager is just doing your diligence dotting your i's crossing your t's getting those bids in so get into a schedule, get into a cadence, get into a routine and, and get your calendar filled because your life's dynamic, man. You get a lot going on in your life where hopefully the goal of this show and the goal of Roto World, right, is to not only help you win, but it's to save you time because you got yeah. stuff going on. But the the best fantasy managers are the best anything, right? The, who are the best football coaches or whatever, the best chess players? Attention to detail. OK, so I want you to sometime today. Check all your fab schedules and put that stuff in your calendar because you're going to forget because you're picking up your kid at soccer practice. And I don't want I want you to and, you know, download the Rotowire app. We're going to talk about it later. You know, I want to save you time and I want to see you in contention this season. That is our goal. Yeah. You know, I, even even me, sometimes I'll forget. Like mm-hmm. there's one league where I have a Sunday like midnight uh, waiver period and it's a it's a dynasty league. So it's not necessarily the end of the world, but. Last season, I would forget, like every other Sunday, I'd be like, ah, I wake up Monday morning, I see this whole flood of transactions, and I'm not, I'm not in the mix there. Guys you wanted, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, definitely uh, helpful. I should, I should, uh, I should make a calendar. Somehow I don't. But Let I- me say one other thing about this, okay? Now, so Sunday is my big fab day, because my hometown league's at 6, 8 o'clock is Tout Wars, 10 o'clock is TGFBI, and, and new- midnight is Labor. One of the best cheat codes, what you do is, okay, so I do my first bidding at my home, home league, six o'clock comes, I see who's bid on, and I notice the guys I missed. And then maybe I pick up those guys at Tout Wars. Maybe there's a guy at Tout Wars, oh, oh, Jeff Zimmerman was on a guy I wasn't on or something. You you cheat, right? Take, learn something, or maybe it gives you an idea how the market feels. Obviously, every league is different. Just because one player was expensive and fab in one league doesn't mean he's going to be expensive and fab in another league. But take that information because it's, it's really complicated, and some sites are easier to sort through than others. I think Yahoo is really yeah. good about that. Is, some yeah. sites aren't as easy to find the mm-hmm. hidden treasure. So if you your leagues are probably divvying up the free agents at different times, you, I, you know, first come, first serve is the rule in uh, Yahoo Friends and Family. We're drafting actually in the season this year because yep. schedules were so tight. But, you know, if DJ picked up somebody I missed out on in Friends and Family, that's just a tip for me to pick him up in my other leagues. Yeah, totally. Good call. So with today's episode, we're going to take a little bit of a a break from the fantasy game. This is our 2023 MLB season preview episode, Uh, division winners, World Series picks, individual awards, 
Should be a lot of fun. But before we get to that, just one last reminder. New MLB season, new rules, new stars. So pair it with the Roto World Baseball Draft Guide. Get all the player profiles, rankings, and projections you need to hit your draft out of the park. Go to NBCSportsEdge.com slash draft guide and use Pennant25 to save 25% off at checkout. Again, that promo code is you see there, Pennant25. All right, so let's get into our division picks. We're going to start with the American League, and I'll, I'll let you go off and running here, Scott. Yeah, uh, I guess we're doing an east to west, I assume. And I'm going to yes. start with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I think plus 200 is the current price. I just love the, the shape of this roster where so many players are on the front nines of their careers. They haven't had their best seasons yet. I'm speaking about Vladimir Guerrero. I'm speaking about Bo Bichette. I think the depth of the pitching staff is really interesting. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels like if just a couple of guys hit the high end of their ranges here, this could be a 95, hundred win team. Obviously it's a loaded division because the Yankees are very good. Tampa Bay. We know there's a special sauce in the, the, with the Rays that, uh, and actually I have the Rays pick for something else, which may not make sense because I didn't pick them to win the division, but uh, just put a bookmark there. Baltimore is a team on the come. And even if the Red Sox aren't a great team, I mean, how far can they fall down? I and mean, they still have some good players. They'll still probably be a 75 win team or so, but I think the highest ceiling, of all the teams here is Toronto. I think they have everything. I think they have a really deep lineup and I think they have a very good pitching staff. I like their bullpen. I'm excited to see how the new dimensions play. I, plus 200 may not be the greatest price in the world, but yeah. I think they're the best team in the AL East and they're my pick to take that division. So I'm Yankees here, which is, I guess it's the chalk position. Uh, I don't feel as great about it going into the season as maybe I thought I would. Carlos Rodon uh, on his way back. It doesn't seem like he's going to miss a ton of time, but you know, he has an injury history. It's always something to keep in mind. Luis Severino is is on the injured list to start the season as well uh, with the lat injury. I don't think it's going to be super long, but, you know, two key pieces for that uh, pitching staff, which I thought was really good uh, coming into spring training. Now there's questions. We'll see if Clark Schmidt emerges and, and can be a difference maker in that rotation. He's had a great spring. Uh, what dynamic does Volpe add to this team? A lot of veterans on this roster, which I think is mostly a good thing, but I think getting an infusion of youth, uh, I think will really help uh, this team. And there's just so much talent on the Yankees from top to bottom. I'm going to go chalk with the Yankees. Not a great price there either, plus plus 130. But um, yeah, Yankees for me. You know, with those two starting pitchers being hurt, I actually think it's interesting. I don't have a price on this in front of me, but I wonder if the Yankees maybe could miss the playoffs. And that's one of the predictions I've made. Mm. Disclaimer, I'm a Red Sox fan, and even when years when the Red Sox aren't going to contend, and I don't think they're going to contend, most Red Sox fans will tell you that season is defined by hopefully the Yankees don't win the World Series. So thankfully, that hasn't been a big problem in the last 20 years. I think they've only won that one championship. But I'm just concerned with two-thirds of their – ostensibly their playoff rotation already hurt. That just makes me nervous. Carlos Rodon, of course, remember the shape of his career, right? I mean, the White Sox non-tendered him shocking you would think they would know that you know, what his health status was he goes to san francisco he rebuilds his brand he gets the big deal with the yankees i'm a little bit concerned about that bounce over to the central and it's a three-horse race right because the royals mm -hmm. are you know they're a few years away detroit i don't know what they're doing but it's not going to happen this year so do you like the guardians do you like the white Sox? do you like the twins and i'm going to go with the white Sox. this is one of the few disagreements we had last week we had vaughn on it was mm -hmm. great we did our over under show on wednesday go back and listen to that if you're looking to make some over under plays, one of the we had a lot of agreement on that show. One of the few things we disagreed on was the White Sox. Vaughn was fading them. I like them. A lot of players hit the low end of their ranges last year. I mean, G, Lucas Giolito got COVID in, in May. His season was derailed after that. Robert was hurt. Eloy was hurt. Tim Anderson was hurt. I, I dare all these guys to get hurt again. And so many mm -hmm. of these players, again, in their 20s or in their maybe late 20s, Giolito came to camp best shape of his life. I think Lance Lynn, who is in his thirties will have a bounce back season. And maybe Tony La Russa was just the wrong manager at the wrong time. I just think getting the right voice in there, right? Look what's done for the Boston Bruins. They changed coaches and now they're having one of the best seasons in NHL history. Sometimes just getting a different person at the front of that ship. Uxha Walter. What, yeah, for sure. For sure. Totally, man. I hear you. Um, I think the White Sox are a sleeping giant. Mm. I think they might win 95 games. And look, mm. I, I will hear you on the Guardians and the Twins. They're good teams too. But to me, the White Sox can be, if they just get a reasonable run out, I don't even think they need a lot of breaks. Just don't have the the unbelievably unlucky season they had last year. 
Uh, right now, plus 300 is the price I'm seeing. They're my pick in the AL Central. Yeah, I've, I've kind of wavered on this in the in recent days. Uh, Tristan McKenzie, as we know, is going to miss uh, quite a bit of time with a Terra's major strain. Uh, I need him. Shul- I shoulder him. strain, essentially. Um, so two months without him in that rotation, I think, could be a real difference maker in, in how this uh, season unfolds. I'm going to stick with the Guardians. Uh, they are the favorites currently at plus 115. Uh, I'm going by FanDuel uh, odds here, but, you know, shop around and see, you know, see what works best for you. I, I think the Twins are quietly had a, had a good offseason as well. I like what they've done. Um, so I think they're right in this mix, too. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if, if the White Sox reached like their 95th percentile outcome. You know, like that's they have that kind of talent that they can do that, uh, certainly. But. You know, I, I do wonder, another concern about the Guardians is they really beat up on the AL Central last year. So how does this balanced schedule impact them? But I think in some other ways, uh, uptick in stolen base is expected. The, the shift ban, they're a very good defensive team. Uh, they can take advantage of speed on the base paths. Maybe some of these rule changes work in their favor, too. Um, so I think they're well positioned to do that. I'm going to stick with the Guardians as, as the safe play. I think they'll be right there. But, you know, if McKenzie doesn't come back after two months, if something goes wrong here with Beaver as well, uh, it could be a rough summer for the Guardians. Yeah, M- McKenzie's injury was one of the reasons I moved off them. But as you said, they do a lot of little things well. They're almost like the central version of the, of the Rays where there's a special mm-hmm. sauce there. Terry Francona is the right man skippering that ship. I just want to mention for the Twins, I did a radio spot yesterday when we talked about the twins and it's like it really comes down to like two guys it's like how many games are you getting from carlos correa and how many games really are you getting from byron buxton if you could get me to 145 for correa and even like 130 from buxton i might punch the twins right now it's just it's hard to know what you're getting byron buxton's upside is mvp byron buxton's downside is he ruined my fantasy season i mean he's just all over the map the the guy could hit 40 home runs the guy could win a gold glove i don't know that he's going to run anymore but certainly yep. a 30, 30 or 40, 40 season in a healthy year is something at one point he was capable of doing. Now, if I were the twins, I'd tell him not to run because we just need him healthy, but they have two guys. I mean, the Correa off season was crazy, right? He's a giant. No, he's a Met. No, he's back to the twins. You would think it was kind of like the Rodon situation. I mentioned, you would think the twins would know Correa's medicals better than anybody. So I think it's interesting. He landed there, but right. two key guys that we have to keep an eye on and sticking with that injury motif motif will shift over to the West. The Astros, the big, you know, the defending champs, the, the big bad team in the block. But McCullers is hurt and Alvarez is hurt. And Kyle Tucker might be a little bit dinged up. And I'm I'm just feeling the Seattle Mariners thing. They have, I don't know that they have a true number one ace, like you think like Cy Young Award, but they have four number twos. They have yeah. four guys who legitimately belong in a playoff rotation. Julio Rodriguez, one of the most exciting young players. I think Teoscar Hernandez was an interesting add. I think Eugenio Suarez is misunderstood. He's going to hit 30 home runs, so what if he hits 235? Colton Long, I thought, was a good add. Still a plus defender. If it's a year, Houston is a better team if everything, if every team hits like yeah. their median range, but Houston's already got things going wrong, man. I right. I think Seattle can steal this division. The price I'm seeing right now is plus 360. I, I think Seattle's going to be a playoff team anyway, but uh, well, let's just yeah. go for it. I, I, I'm picking. I guess I'm going against the grain a little bit because I haven't picked any of the favorites, and it's hard. Mm-hmm. Baseball has so much striation between the top and the bottom. It can be really hard not to pick favorites, but I'm not picking any favorites in the AL East. I'm going with a lot of second choices in the AL West. I only see two real contenders. Maybe you can talk me into the Angels, but I'm going to punch Seattle plus three sixty. I I was very tempted to do the same. Believe me, because if you remember last week in the over under episode, I said over on. Uh, Mariners wins I still believe that to be the case I just think the Astros are they're just still the better team and they're the champs too uh, granted they lost Justin Verlander but I still think there's a solid rotation here even with the colors being hurt uh, Framber Valdez uh, really the the I guess he's the number one right now but I think Christian Javier is capable of taking a step forward this year I've seen a number of people tout him to be like a dark horse Cy Young Award candidate I, and Hunter Brown is on is on his way too. Um, we'll see what he can be. Uh, granted, losing Hel- Jose Altuve for a couple of months is a blow, uh, but I still think this is the best team in the American League West. I don't. I I still would maybe sprinkle on the Mariners. Just you never know, and that number is is pretty solid. I think you said plus three sixty. I think uh, worth worth speculating on that. Okay, so where are we going now? Are we going National League? Are we picking the 
Yeah, pennant Na winner. National. Uh, let's do National League uh, divisions first, and then we'll get to our World Series matchups. Yeah, uh, eating a little bit of chalk on this side. I think the Braves have the best team in baseball. I certainly think they have the best lineup. Now, to win this division, they're going to need their pitching to hit the high end of their range again. Spencer Strider, we know, is a two-pitch pitcher, but, man, he is sure <clears> dominant. Yeah, I see MVP candidates all over this team, too. I, I see three guys you could concede oh, yeah. bet on. We'll get in that in a minute. And I like that a lot of their key guys, they haven't had their best season yet. We haven't seen the best Acuna season yet. I don't think we've seen the best Austin Riley season yet. I think Matt Olson, second year in Atlanta, second year in the National League, he was a monster in spring training, maybe against AAA pitching, but whatever. He was Godzilla tearing everything, and he'll be in a better hitter with the shift now, the regulations coming in. I, I just think Atlanta, look, I know your Mets are going to be in the in the hunt, and it's, it's not like Philadelphia doesn't have a chance, although a lot of things have already gone wrong with that team, but – I yeah. think Atlanta's just a little bit deeper. I have to side with the Braves. You're not getting a great price on this, plus 100. Maybe if you're a Braves guy, you think about betting them different ways. Maybe they're over-under total. Maybe you pick them to win the World Series. But uh, they are my pick to win the National League East. I'm I'm with you. I, I think the Braves are the strongest team. I think the Mets losing Edwin Diaz, that, that you know, that it's just a little separator. I don't think it's it's – not going to be like a five win swing or anything like that, but in a, a division that should be hotly contested, it's enough for me to, to say the Braves. It's interesting because the Braves really didn't do much this off season. They just did. Um, in fact, they lost Danzy Swanson and Orlando RC is going to play shortstop on opening day. I guess they can afford to do that um, because that lineup is so deep. Sean Murphy, we shouldn't underscore that addition. Sean Murphy is a, is a big addition. Uh, and especially in a year where there's, you know, there's going to be more stolen bases you know, pop time, his arm, like that's going to be key. Uh, I think the Braves were smart to pick him up, but uh, they didn't do a whole heck of a lot uh, to improve this team. And I think a big reason for that is they expect uh, Ozzy Albies to bounce back. They expect Ronald Cunha Jr. to be more like himself. And, and I can understand uh, betting on that. So I have to go Braves too. I think they have a lot of MVP candidates as well. We will, we'll get into that in a little bit. I'm sure the Mets, will, I, I'm confident the Mets will be a 90 plus one team. Phillies could be right there as well, but I think the Braves, uh, I agree, is the, is the strongest team here. So sticking with the chalk theme, I'm not sure I would bet this, but if you want my NL Central winner, I got to go with the Cardinals. Uh, I just, I believe in this organization. They may have the best defensive team in the National League. It was two mm -hmm. years ago. They had five Gold Glovers. You hit the ball, Nolan Arenado, it's an out. You hit the ball, Tommy Edmund, it's an out. Now it'll be interesting. They don't have Yadier Molina as much as we love Wilson Contreras' bat. I'm curious, and Joshin was talking about this in his newsletter recently. I mean, the, the Cardinals pitchers have had such a great life because Yachty blocked everything, and nobody could run on Yachty. So we'll see. Contreras is, is really a hit-first catcher. But, yeah. man, this lineup is so deep. I mean, last year, Tommy Edmund was their leadoff man. He'll probably bat 7th, 8th, or ninth this year. I think Brendan mm -hmm. Donovan is an interesting breakout candidate. I just – you know, if, if Walker hits the ground running, he's a rookie of the year candidate. But, but even if he has a slow start, and I know he hasn't hit the last week of spring training, they could send him down for more seasoning. It's such a deep team. The the top couple of hitters who don't play every day would be starters for almost any other team. I'm, I'm, I'm a Milwaukee fan. I think they're certainly going to be there. And, and if they get in the playoffs, they're very dangerous because they have two legitimate number ones. But that's the Cardinals have such a deep roster. Again, I don't know how you make a lot of money on this at minus 130. That's not generally how I bet these things. But – the St. Louis Cardinals are a team I certainly believe in. Yeah, I think the big question with the Cardinals is the starting rotation. Uh, Adam White, Adam Wainwright is going to begin the season on the injured list. Could be a little while before he returns. So you're looking at Miles Michaelis, Jordan Montgomery, Jack Flaherty, who comes with his own uh, series of question marks, Stephen Matz, Jake Woodford. That doesn't sound like a World Series contender to me. Um, the lineup is very good, like you were saying. Um, Lars Newfar, I think, is, a, is an exciting uh, breakout potential type of player um, could hit second in this lineup. We'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, but yeah, lineup's very deep. I'm not impressed with what the Brewers have done uh, to bolster their lineup. Um, they have some interesting uh, prospects who are on the way. We talked a little bit about that uh, in recent weeks. Sal Frelick, um, Joey Weimer, like they're going to be here uh, sooner or later. Maybe they can make a difference here with this lineup. Uh, but I think all around, you know, you have to play a chalk with the Cardinals. And one more piece of chalk. Again, I, I went off the chalk path in the American League. I'm not really doing the National League. I feel like in the National League West, it's you get to pick the Dodgers or the Padres. It just so many things have not fallen the Dodgers' way. They obviously didn't keep Trey Turner. They lost Gavin Lux very early in the season. 
Uh, Walker Bueller won't be a factor this year. We'll see how many innings. I do like Clayton Kershaw as a fantasy play this year, but it's like 135, 140 innings of Kershaw. Nobody's thinking 180 anymore. So I, I got to side with San Diego. They just keep adding pieces, and so many of them, again, they're on the front nine of their careers. They haven't had their best seasons yet. Juan Soto just had the worst year he's going to have in his 20s. I got to figure he bounces back. Even though Xander Bogarts is not somebody I want for fantasy, maybe that first season in San Diego, the fact that he's just another guy in this lineup shows you how deep they are. Tatis will eventually come back. He's a monster. They have frontline pitchers. It's, it's really lucky that the Musgrove injury isn't that serious. He should be back in sure. April. I hope they get the the better version of Josh Hader. He had kind of an up and down season. There's a while where he couldn't do anything right, but he did finish the year well. I right. think both teams will make the playoffs in my mind, but I think this is the year San Diego and they finished well behind the Dodgers last year. And, and again, it's not a great bet at plus plus one twenty. but if you're tapping me on the shoulder, you need me to pick the NL West. I have to side with the Padres. I, I agree with you. Uh, and it doesn't seem like the, the books really agree. Like the Dodgers are just automatically right near the top. I mean, I, I guess that the reputation precedes them. I mean, we're so used to just plugging in the, them in there first place, but I think this is the strongest Padres team we've seen until this point. Uh, they, like you said, just keep adding pieces. The rotation's very steady. You Darvish leading the way there. Joe Musgrove, maybe. I think he'll start his first turn through the rotation, perhaps. Um, and Blake Snell really came on during the second half last year. I think just from top to bottom, it's a really good team. The Dodgers is, the roster-wise, I think it's the weakest one they've had in probably a decade. We've talked about that a bit. Not to say that it's bad, but it's just not up to par with what we've seen in the past bullpen has some question marks as well um so yeah i I think they're both really good teams but uh padres are the play for me as well so i guess we got to get a couple teams in the world series i mentioned the braves how it may not be the greatest bet to get bet them to win the division but i'm going to take them to go to win the national league plus 380 and we actually win the world series at plus 750 this always feels a little bit funky. Maybe I'm being a little bit too cute. My American League representative is not going to be a team I picked to win the division. I'm going to pick the Rays. So I just love Shane McClanahan, who I'll, I'll tease as my AL Cy Young Award winner. I love him at the front of a rotation. And they, they have some – they're a team that just does a lot of things right that aren't always quantifiable. And I guess this, this lineup may be a little bit – may stretch a little bit deeper than it has in recent years. So I, if you want to pick any other team, you know, any of the major contenders in the American League, you, you want to pick Houston, you want to pick the Yankees. You, I mentioned Toronto winning the AL East. I'd be fine with all that. And wouldn't it be fun if the White Sox hit the high end of their range? But I feel like the Rays are, are kind of due. Maybe that's not the right way to, to bet these things. But th- they've been in contention so many years. They've been in the ALCS. They've only gone to, the, I believe, what, two World Series, one or two World Series. It feels like that's a little bit of a light bag. But I'm just really excited to see Shane McClanahan pitching maybe three times in a, in a seven game series and Tampa Bay is such a smartly run organization. I think it's their time. Give me Atlanta over Tampa Bay in the world series. I'm also taking the Braves at, at plus three eighty. I think all around they're, they're just the best team in the national league. The Padres are probably second for me as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, I think the Braves have all the pieces to succeed. Um, assuming that Acuna and all these can stay healthy. They're, they're key pieces there. I think they have a, a potentially very deep rotation when, you know, Kyle Wright comes back. Maybe we see something out of Mike Soroka. Um, so I think there's, yeah, I think Vaughn Grissom emerges at some point during the season. Uh, they give him a little more time to work on his defense and the minors. Uh, this has a chance to be a very, uh, very strong team. Rysel Iglesias is going to start the year on the injured list, but eventually he'll be back as well. I'm going to take the Yankees to win the American League. And I think maybe it could be a little bit of a rough start for them, like we mentioned, with uh, missing some uh, two key pieces from their rotation. But I think when it's all said and done, let's say even they don't win first place in the American League East, I think when we get to October, uh, you know, my my bet is saying that they will have those two pieces back. Maybe they make some in-season additions well as well to improve around the margins. I just think they're the most talented team in the American League. So uh, give me a Braves-Yankees uh, World Series matchup. Uh, my winner is the Yankees, actually. Um, I'm going uh, plus 850 for the Yankees uh, to win the World Series. My Mets fan friends are probably tearing their hair out right now. Um, but, yeah, I think in a playoff situation, uh, the kind of rotation that they could bring up there potentially, uh, Cole, Rodon, uh, you know, Cortez, Severino, lots of ways you could go there. Uh, I think uh, could be very, very potent. Uh, so give me Yankees eight, uh, plus 850. So I have to ask you. You're obviously a Mets fan. I'm a Red Sox fan, so we're supposed to hate the Yankees. We haven't talked much Mets about this show, 
We yeah. both have the Braves winning the NL East. We both have the Braves going to the World Series. What's your Mets RX this year? I did talk about them last week as an over bet, as going over where they're somewhere between the 91 to 93 range. I think they're going to be in the mid 90s. What type of season are you expecting from the Mets? I think they're going to have a very good season. I, I just think that, and we'll get into this with like the Cy Young talk. I just can't project uh, Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer to throw, you know, 180 innings mm-hmm. each. I just can't do that. I think they'll be very good when they pitch, but I think something's bound to happen. You know what I mean? And I'm just figuring that into uh, my projection for the Mets. I think they're going to win 90 plus games. I think they're going to win a wild card spot. I think they could go far. I think they could be NLCS against the Braves. Like very easily that could happen. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think it, it is tough to build really your hopes, pin your hopes around uh, two pitchers who are, you know, 40 years old. I yeah, think I think they, a, lot of, a lot of fun to watch, but it's tough. I think they really need like a, a 13 to 15 win season out of a David Peterson or a Carlos uh, a Coco Cordero, you know, something like that. Um, Carlos Carrasco, I should say. Uh, it was a big hit for them to get Quintana hurt early. Mm-hmm. And they're hoping that maybe he'll pitch in the second half of the year. That's far from a sure thing. Of course, the good thing if you're a pro Mets guy, you're a Mets fan, is, you know, Steve Cohen. I mean, he's, he's not going to sit back. If this team sure. – is missing something. He's going to go and try to try to trade for it, try to buy it, try to rent it, whatever he can do. Um, sure. Money's not an object. He's not trying to make money on the Mets. He just wants to put the best team on the field. And um, it's exciting to have a man, a, uh, an owner like that, who just, who has the heart of a fan and doesn't care about the money. That's, you know, that's what we want all of our owners to do is just try to do everything they can to win. So I think the Mets will be a fascinating team. As I always mentioned, they have the oh, best yeah. TV booth in the league. So I can't wait to see what happens with them, but, it is hard when you're, you're two horses as great as Ver- Verlander's off the Cy Young season and Max Scherzer's 30s have been fantastic. But how many starts can you really expect from those guys? Uh, you guys need some MVP picks. And uh, both of my MVP picks are from guys I picked to win divisions. Vladimir Guerrero. First of all, the AL MVP discussion always starts with like Shohei Otani because he's a u- unique player. He pitches, he hits, he's great at everything. He's like a 12 tool player. But the one thing that works against Otani, I thought Judge was the right pick last year, as great as Otani was. But there's a little bit of voting fatigue. I mean, if yeah. if voters didn't have MVP fatigue, you know, Willie Mays would have like eight MVPs, or Ted Williams would have seven, or Barry Mike Bonds Trout would have like five Trout would have would have you know would need an extra trophy room, and you know they don't they don't want to give the same guy the MVP every year. So a lot of times, and also the Angels, if they don't contend. And somebody's kind of neck and neck with Otani. It might be easier to say, well, this other guy was on a 95 win team. Otani's on a 77 win team. Now, I don't know. People have different opinions of how the MVP should be, what the definition of valuable should be. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But Vladimir Guerrero, look, his father was a beloved player. He's a beloved player. And I, I think the team's going to be competitive. I think there's a good chance they could be a playoff team or maybe even win that A, at least as I said. And what's Vladimir Guerrero's upside? He could win a triple crown. I mean, he could certainly win sure. a batting title. The, the fences have moved in. I know they've moved up a little bit too. But there's just the timing just seems right where so many players on this offense are in their right peak ages where you, their best season could come at any moment. So uh, Vladimir Guerrero right now at plus 1,200, 1,200, 1,300. The odds are going up as we speak. Uh, get in on Vladimir Guerrero. He is my AL MVP choice. I'm going to go chalk with Otani. I think this is the best Angels roster they have had since he's been on the team. Uh, I think depth-wise, they finally got some pieces to, to complement him, uh, just in case things go wrong, which they always do with the Angels for some reason. Uh, and maybe I'm buying like the Kool-Aid from the World Baseball Classic just to see Trout and Otani on the big stage. But so um, there's so many ways that Otani can impact the game that sort of like if he's pretty good – as a pitcher and a hitter, not like otherworldly, how could you say he's not the most valuable player? You know what I mean? Uh, just so much that he can do. So by far, he's the favorite at, at plus 220 right now for Judge, Trout, Julio Rodriguez, Jordan Alvarez. Um, but I have to go with the chalk with Otani just because, like I was saying, if he's above average pitcher and hitter, there's just such a strong case for him. Totally reasonable. Let me just concede up front. Like if you said to me, Pick the AL MVP winner, and I'll pay your mortgage for a year if you're right. I, of course, I'd pick Otani. You know, I, I, I'd have to. I, I, my Guerrero pick is a little bit influenced by where the odds are, but uh, yeah. yeah, Otani. And, and I mentioned voter fatigue, but the flip side might be that if he is close, people might think, "Well, I really wanted to give it to Otani last year, but the season Judge had was undeniable." 
So maybe if Otani gets into a, a coin flip with somebody, maybe think people think, well, you know, how can we not give it to this guy this year after we didn't give it to him last year when he had an unprecedented season? You, look, you're not going to go – you never go wrong showering Shohei Otani with love. i fascinated to see where his next team is. I, I don't see how the Angels can keep him. But uh, anyway, that's uh, – so, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah let's nationally. go to NL. How about uh, how about some of the Braves who we keep talking about? And I, I think you could go a lot of different ways. You want to go Austin yep. Riley? You want to go Matt Olson, who's twenty five to one? I know you like him for some home run props, but I'm going to go with Ronald Acuna, who has four. He's a guy who has said, "Hey, I'd like to do 40-40. That sounds pretty fun to me. It's a target for him. The lineup from one to nine is the deepest in baseball. I'm so glad you mentioned Vaughn Grissom. Look, he's not going to start the season. The Braves look at him as a long term stock. It's like, okay, let's get him right on defense. We don't need him on April first. We need him in the second half of the year. We need him in the playoffs. They're sitting on on a player like that who's not even going to start the season with them. Mm-hmm. But um, Acuna's a monster. He just needs a little bit of health, and he's surrounded by the the most lineup buoyancy you could possibly have. He's uh, what is he? A, a thousand, plus a thousand. Not actually, not even a bad odds for Acuna to win National League MVP. I think he's an easy pick for me. Yeah, this is this is tough because I mean the Braves do have a bunch of candidates here who are very reasonable. Matt Olson is. He's hit eight home runs this spring. I hope he saves some of that for the regular season because I already uh, already bought a ticket for him to lead the majors in home runs uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, that price has only gone up a little bit. Um, I'm going Austin Riley. Um, I think there is a season in here that we haven't seen yet. Uh, I think he could hit 40 home runs. I think he could drive in 130 runs in this lineup. We've seen We've seen him hit 300 before. That was probably a little bit inflated by a, a number of different factors, but he hits the ball extremely hard. I think he is a potential triple crown candidate as well, and a better defender than many people thought he could be coming into this season. He's plus 1,600. So again, this is like a, a long shot thing, but whereas in the AL, I see that field of potential candidates being a lot smaller than in the National League. I think the National League is wide open. It could be any of 10 people. Like Pete Alonso has the same odds as Austin Riley on FanDuel plus 1,600. And Alonso could be there too. Uh, he could do a very similar thing that Riley might do this season. Uh, so yeah, and in the NL, I'm more inclined to like, eh, whatever. Let's take a shot, see what happens. I think Riley's that guy for me. I like it. I'm so glad you mentioned Pete Alonso too. My goal in almost every draft is to have either Pete Alonso or Matt Olson as my first baseman, depending yeah. on where my draft slot is or, or how the pricing goes in my auction. So Pete Alonso, who's already won a couple of RBI titles. I think he's a good RBI bet this year. He's obviously the Mets have a really good lineup around him. They'll have plenty of people on base. So I'm glad you mentioned Alonso. And remember with MVP too, you could win Cy Young on any team. They pretty much just go by the stats with Cy Young. With MVP, you need a narrative, right? It's going to hurt you Mm -hmm. if you're on a losing team. And so that's a a lot big reason why we're pushing a lot of these Braves is because we all expect them to be one of the best teams in baseball. So I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Whether you want to go with with Olsen, you want to go with Riley, you want to go with Acuna, I think you go around with any of those guys. I mentioned, I already teased my AL Cy Young Award winner, Shane McClanahan, at plus 1,400. It's also fascinating that Garrett Cole's never won this award. Now, yeah. the the player, he's active. Uh, the player is my favorite trivia questions. The all-time leading Cy Young vote getter who's never won the Cy Young, okay? Pause for a second. You can pause the podcast. You want to try to answer it? Okay, time's up. It's Adam Wainwright. But Garrett oh, yeah. Cole is Eric Garrett Cole's awfully close. He's never won a Cy Young. And I wonder if Cole is in the mix. I wonder if people it's like a lifetime achievement award. It's like, oh, you know, Garrett mm-hmm. Cole's gonna win this at some point. But yeah, I'm gonna go McClanahan. I like the shape of his career where he's gotten a little bit more workload, a little bit more workload. I think this will be the year maybe he gets to like 190, 190, 195 innings. And that can mean 240 strikeouts. I can see him easily winning 16, 17, 18 games. Is a deep bullpen here. They always have a plus defense. It's a good pitcher park for McClanahan. And he doesn't have any platoon split. He gets lefties and righties out just as dominantly. So um, a lot of ways to go here. You, you could take Otani. You could take Cole. I think Lucas Giolito is an interesting long shot. He can't possibly have the messy year he had last year. He's come to camp in really good shape. So I think Giolito is an interesting long shot. But uh, McClanahan at plus 1,400 sounds awfully good to me. Yeah, I like that too. Uh, I have uh, Luis Castillo at plus 1,600 mm. as my AL Cy Young Award favorite. Uh, Jacob deGrom is actually the favorite at plus 550. I would not. No, can't thanks. touch it. I hate to say this. I love <laughs> Jacob deGrom. I can't touch that. 
No, thank you. But uh, you look at what Castillo did after the trade last year, 3.17 ERA and 11 starts, had an uptick in strikeouts and walks. I don't know if that is an uptick in a positive way, uh, improved his walk rate. I don't know how much of that is a factor of getting outside of Cincinnati, but I think pitching a full season uh, out there in Seattle, which is with a team that we expect to be very good, good bullpen, um, going to be a lot of wins there uh, for Castillo. I think we could see him take off. He made 25 starts last year, had a 2.99 ERA, 150 innings. But if he can get back to that, you know, 190 inning mark, I think we could see him strike out 220, 230 batters potentially uh, with an ERA right, right in the high twos. Uh, and maybe maybe a little bit better. Um, I think the Mariners defense is very good as well. Um, so, yeah, I think this could be his year in, in an American League field, which I think is uh, pretty wide open. Uh, I like Castillo to be uh, a Cy Young Award contender. I've picked him as my number one in a couple of fantasy leagues as well. Uh, I think he's going a little bit later than he should. Yeah, it's a team worth staying up for. I, again, I, I said the depth of their rotation was impressive, but Kasi will certainly be at the front of that rotation. Although I really, any of those four guys I'd like to have on my rosters, and I, I have them winning the division. So I, I certainly think Kasi is going to be a big part of that. I did go chalk in the National League, Corbin Burns. I feel most confident. You talked about the Mets, their old pitching staff. If Burns is still in his 20s. He, he's a tank. And a big part of winning something like a Cy Young award is you get to get to the mound 30 plus times, right? I mean, you can't, you can't win this award with 22 starts. It's, you know, the voters are, are going to turn their noses down at that. So birds is a strikeout guy. He's on the front nine of his career. He's got a body type. He's shown durability. And um, I don't know how long he's going to be on the Brewers. Uh, it's a little bit sad to talk about. He may not be in their long-term plans as they do try to think <clears> of <throat> financial flexibility, but um, I think he's got a Cy Young season in him. Plus 600 isn't the greatest price in the world, but he's still going to be my pick. Yeah, I think that's, that's fair. When I'm trying to poke holes in the, in the top of the market here, Sandy Alcantara, I have worries about the defense behind him. The Marlins infield defense is just not great. Um, Verlaine and Scherzer, like I said earlier, I just can't, expect them to throw enough innings to, I think going to be great, but uh, probably not likely to throw enough innings to win. Burns is, it's hard to argue against him. I'm going to take a shot here with Zach Allen though, uh, at plus 1100. He was awesome uh, from basically, I think the end of May on, uh, he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Uh, 2.54 ERA last season, uh, missing more bats, improved his walk rate as well. It's the first season that he got, uh, he got to 184 innings, easily his uh, career high. Uh, can he do that again? I think is the big question. Uh, but I think this is a team that's going to have some buzz as well, which might help his case. Um, but I think I think Gallon is maybe the most underrated pitcher in baseball. And maybe this season uh, we see him jump to the forefront uh, and recognize as one of the game's best pitchers. This is an underrated team. I, I, I think yep. Gurriel's been a great value all season. Jake McCarthy is a player not everybody's familiar with. You talked about Moreno being an interesting target for catchers. I I think they're going to be like an 81 and 81 team. And you may say, well, so what? I mean, they're going to beat their over under total. It's hard. They're in a division with the Dodgers. They're in a division with the Padres. They're not going to have the same payroll. But I think they're going to be competitive. And as you said, Gallon, he showed it last year. I mean, he was just lights out in the second half of the year. I think he's a great pick and a really good price. In fact, even though I picked Burns, if you had to pick just one of these two guys to bet on, I think Gallon actually makes more sense. They don't have the depth of the rotation, I don't think, to be a playoff contender. You know, Kelly's a solid number two, but he's in his mid-30s now. The back of their rotation could be really ugly, and I'm not sure how their bullpen's going to shake out. But – this, there's fantasy value on this team a lot. Like I talk about the Reds, who have three really up and coming starters, and they're some one of those guys is going to win a Cy Young one day. I don't know if it'll be this year, but I think the Reds have a lot of fantasy juice. To me, the Diamondbacks are one of the greatest fantasy value. If you're still drafting, you still got draft coming up. Grab a couple of Diamondbacks because this nobody's going to fight you over Christian Walker, and he's going to hit 30 home runs. I, I think Zach Allen is a buzzy player, but I think he's a, headed for a great season, and I really like that price. So let's uh, let's finish it up with uh, Rookie of the Year picks. Yep. So Anthony Volpe has been one of the big winners. Um, I know plus 650 maybe isn't the greatest price in the world, but the Yankees are going to start him on opening day, and I think he's got the skills to eventually percolate to the top of the lineup. He'll probably bat yep. eighth or ninth on opening day, but D.J. Mayhew, I don't know. He's, he's past his prime. I think Volpe is eventually going to be batting first for this team, right in front of Judge. He's got – 
skill. He's got our base skills. He's got stolen base skills. Going to translate right away. He's not punchless. He'll hit for some power. It's a good hitter's park. And it doesn't hurt that if you have a, a fun rookie season in New York, there'll be a, a few more eyeballs on it. The Yankees totally. will be a contending team for sure. Uh, to me, he was an easy punch. Uh, I know 650 isn't maybe the greatest price in the world, but uh, Anthony Volpe has shot up boards, ADP boards this spring. And I think it's totally justified. He's here to stay and he's going to be a New York Yankee for the next 10 years. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised to see Masataka Yoshidi, Yoshida with better odds than Volpe. Um, just with the hype in recent days, I expected it. I expected Volpe to be higher than Yoshida, um, but somehow it was the opposite. I think Volpe might be the better value here, but there's not a big separation between uh, Yoshida and Volpe. I'm going to go with Yoshida at plus uh, 600. There was so many people questioning why the Red Sox spent this money on Yoshida, and maybe maybe the doubters will be right. We'll see. But if you watched him during the World Baseball Classic, he was money. He was great. And I don't think he's just like this slap punch hitter that I feel like a lot of people were were saying at the time of the signing. Like, he looks like a legitimate middle-of-the-order bat, or if they wanted to use him in the leadoff spot, they could. Uh, but I think he's going to be a force in a lineup that really needs a bopper here. Uh, I think he's going to play a really important part of this lineup this season. Maybe, maybe the doubters will be proven right. Who knows? But... Uh, for me, he passes the eye test. I will go Yoshida. Not your typical rookie, but rookie eligible plus 600. Right. You always wonder how the voters will handle that because he's obviously got all that professional experience overseas. And you're right, man. He he looked the park. I can still picture one of his home runs on, on a really tough pitcher's pitch. Mm -hmm. and he just golfed it out of the ballpark down the right field line. The Red Sox lineup is so thin that they they really need they need him to bat lead off. They need him to hit cleanup. I don't know what they're going to do. He may bounce around. He's got on-base skills. What I would probably do is hit him second and hit Devers fourth and you know, separate the two lefties. But yeah. unfortunately, there's just a lot of dead spots in this lineup, man, and it makes me sad. But I think they, the Red Sox, as you said, were criticized for spending the money on Yoshida. I think it's going to be ultimately a justified price, and the stock certainly went up at the WBC, and can't wait for the next World Baseball Classic. It was so much fun, and Yoshida was one of the winners. I mean, he obviously wasn't as big of a winner as maybe – um, Otani was at the end of it striking out Mike Trout, but uh, he's ready to play. And you mentioned Newt Bar also, who looks like he's ready mm -hmm. for a breakout season with the Cardinals. So much Japanese baseball talent. Can't wait to watch it play. I'm going to go a little bit sleeperish, semi sleeperish, because everybody knows who Miguel Vargas is. But we talked about this is not the greatest Dodgers roster right now. Vargas has a job, probably going to bat in the middle of the order. I think there's some job security here too, which helps when you're yeah. picking rookie of the year. You ask yourself, is this guy so entrenched that if he gets off to a four for 37 start, he's going to still be on the team, still be in the lineup? I think Dave Roberts understands that Vargas is a long term play here. And OK, are the Dodgers down? Yes. Is it still a top 10 offense? For sure. It could be a top five offense. I think he's going to hit 20 home runs. And uh, uh, again, it's not it's not the Dodgers offense we saw a couple of years ago, but I still think it's a plus offense. And. I think he's going to have good lineup real estate all, all year, plus a thousand is a decent price. Give me Vargas. I think at the end of the year, we could put Vargas and Volpe's stats next to each other, and they could look very similar. I think Volpe's going to have more stolen bases, but uh, Vargas can can run too. I, I think he can steal 10 to 15 bags, hit 20 homers, you know, uh, drive in 70, score 70. Like That's going to be very useful for fantasy, but also if the Dodgers are good and he's an important part of that, uh, I think plus 1,000 is, is a great price. Hayden Wesneski, who I've talked about a lot, he's plus 1,500. So if you really want to take a shot on Love a rookie it. pitcher, that is a, that is a really – Please draft him. If you have a draft left, I want him on your roster. He's going to yeah. be Chicago's best pitcher. And that's saying something because they have Stroman, they have Tyon. I think yep. Wesneski is going to be their best starter this year. Yep. So uh, uh, just a reminder here real quick, download the Roto World app to receive breaking player news all season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster. Get the latest injury updates, player news, and much more delivered right to your phone. It's available in your app store today. Uh, so make sure to download that uh, as opening day approaches here. Lots of news coming uh, over the next 24 hours. I will be doing a new shift on uh, opening day morning tomorrow. Uh, so I will be totally overwhelmed uh, <laughs> with news. The caffeine. Uh, send, send your caffeine yeah. drinks to, to DJ tomorrow for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by, by, be... by the way, speaking of which, did you see, uh, I, I know you're a baseball guy, but next year for football, all the cut downs are going to come in one small window. 
Mm. And people were tweeting like RIP Roto World writers because all the, <laughs> all the cuts are going to be in one day. Those guys are yeah. going to work like 18 hour shifts. It's, oh, it's going to yeah. be crazy, man. We're probably going to need two or three people on at the same time to, to get through all that. So uh, uh, that should be interesting. But uh, hey, we'll keep people employed. So that's a good thing. For uh, sure. f- finally, we'll finish off here with a fantasy bold prediction. Oh, hang on. Hang on one second. I'm, pardon me one second. We did yeah. not mention Jordan Walker. In the National League, Cy Young race. Uh, now, I, I, look, I, I think I'm emotionally hedging here because I took him in my keeper league with my buddy Scott Gleason. I know Walker hasn't hit much at the end of spring training. He's, he's going to be the NL favorite right now. What, Corbin Carroll, What do you too. say? Uh, Carroll, too, of course. So we didn't mention Walker or Carroll, and I'm sure our listeners are like, hey, wait a minute. What about those guys? They're, they're the right pick. Uh, what do you say about Walker and Carroll going into the season? I think Carroll is a – is the fa- the slight favorite of her Walker for a reason because he got a little bit of major league time uh, last year. He looks the part. He can steal 50 bases this year. Like uh, I think there's reason to believe in that. Um, but I, I just wanted to go uh, when I'm when I'm picking uh, a prop bet here. I I don't necessarily want to do the one that's the safest. Uh, so not to say that I don't think that Carroll can win or Walker's going to be good or whatever. Um, but I think when I'm doing a pick like this, I, I want to put like, hey, I'll put 10 down. If Vargas wins, I get 100. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it's it. A okay. Yeah. And also what, you know, when we're talking division winners and yeah, it's like chalk. Like, it's hard to like win money that way. Do one where you can pick all the division winners. You know what I mean? Put put down five, pick, pick the six division winners. If you hit that, maybe it's the, maybe the chances aren't great, but you're only putting five down. You could actually win quite a bit of money that way. Uh, another fun one that I'll throw out there, try to predict the pitchers will get 200 strikeouts this season. Um, there's a prop for that as well. Pick a few and, you know, put, you only need to put a few dollars down and uh, that's another way, you know, maybe you won't get it, but Hey, you only put five down. Uh, you can make a nice little uh, profit there. Nice well, little, you, you, little you play can money. shape these things differently. If you don't want to bet on the team yeah. necessarily to win a division or win the world series, bet they're over under on their win prop, you know, something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot, a lot of different ways to skin this cat. So we, uh, our last thing is going to be players outside the top 280 P. Yes. So players outside the top 280 P that we expect will be, will finish the year as a top 100 fantasy player. So you can go first, Scott. Yeah. I'm going to kind of surprise people. Cause I, I'm going to ask you, dear listener, who is the deadest roster right now in fantasy, right? Is it the Washington nationals? Is it the Pittsburgh pirates? Is it the Detroit tigers? I posed this question on Twitter and the overwhelming winner was the Oakland A's. So of course my ADP winner is going to be a member of the Oakland A's. The guy you want to draft is Seth Brown last year, Hmm. 23 home runs, 11 steals, 230 is not a great average. Okay. But he was a top 160 player last year. He doesn't need to get that much better. If he just stays healthy, bats clean up and look, it's a horrible lineup that the park needs to go. I don't know if Oakland can keep their team. It'll be sad for me if they leave, but all he needs to do is maybe gain like 15 or 20 batting average points. And, you know, as somebody who could probably gain from he's a, he's a left-handed hitter. So he could maybe gain some points from the shift and all that stuff. I, I know it's not, and I say you want to draft into good offenses. That's an early round pick strategy. That's why I picked Pete Alonzo over Raphael Devers or something like that. In the late rounds, you have to accept what you can get. And it means you're drafting guys on the pirates and the tigers and the nationals and Lane Thomas, sure. whatever. Seth Brown's underrated because his team stinks and because his batting average isn't that good. He was never a prospect. I get it. Qualifies at two different positions. He doesn't need to get that much better to break into the top 100. And there's nobody going to take his job away. And, you know, yeah. they'll let him run. What do they care? You know, they're going to win 55, 60 games, you know? Mm-hmm. I think he's ready for a 25, 15 season. If he hits 250, he'll stick into the top 100. My pick's Anthony Rendon, uh, I, and I know it's been ugly uh, since he's come over to the Angels. Uh, appeared in just 47 games last year, 58 in 2021. Hip surgery, wrist surgery, uh, obviously hard to count on him staying on the field, but the most important factor here is he's healthy right now. He's had a good spring. He's in a great situation as well, hitting right behind the likes of Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. I mean, that is prime real estate, which is, I'm stealing a term from you, uh, Scott, as far as that's concerned. But hey, I mean, hitting behind those guys, I mean, that is that is money. If he could just stay in the lineup, you know, he could justify this price. And maybe it blows up in my face, but you're not, you're not paying for this. You're not paying for the potential. He's as down as he could be over the past couple of years. So 
yeah, I think if he just stays on the field, he can uh, meet this criteria fairly comfortably at a shallow position to boot. Yeah. I, mean, I would love to see it. I remember 2019 where it was Vladimir Guerrero's rookie year. And he was going in some league in a lot of leagues ahead of Anthony Rendon. I said, this is crazy. We already know Anthony Rendon is great. We think Vladimir Guerrero is going to be great. And it just coincided with Rendon's best season. He was third in the MVP voting, hit 319, 34 home runs. He led the majors in RBIs with 126. He scored 117 runs. Since then, he was actually fairly healthy in the pandemic season. It, it, yeah. It's you see the 52 games and think, oh, well, you got hurt. No, no, it was just that screwy <laughs> pandemic season. Since yeah. then, all he's had is injuries, but he's only 33. And as you as you mentioned, maybe it isn't the deepest Angels lineup, but the top half of it, there's just two world-class players. And, and this other guy, you know, Ward, as you mentioned, is going to get on base. I'd love to see it with Rendon. I mean, he was a star at Rice. He came in baseball with a pedigree. And for a long time, he was, he was on a probably a quasi Hall of Fame trajectory. It was probably like, well, who do you like, Anthony Rendon or – Nolan Arenado, and that's turned into like, well, Nolan Arenado is the right answer. Anthony Rendon is the wrong answer, but I would love to see a bounce back season from him. I don't have any Rendon, so I'm not going to benefit from it if it happens, but just as a baseball fan, he's always been one of my favorite hitters. And it'd be yep. nice to see something go right for the Angels for once. They feel like a yeah, star card across franchise in recent seasons. We all want to see Mike Trout. Mike Trout has three playoff games and, and one World Baseball Classic strikeout to his resume right now. I'd like to see some more Mike Trout in October, please. So uh, a big part of that would be a healthy Anthony Rendon. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, and here we go, Scott. The next time we chat, we'll be off and running in this marathon we call the MLB season. Uh, really look forward to having you along for the ride this season, Scott. And make sure you subscribe to Circling the Bases wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to rate and review if you like what you're hearing. Also, follow us on Twitter if you don't already. Scott is Scott underscore Pianowski. I'm at DJ Short. Take care. See you next time. Happy opening day.